Hear me out on this one, okay? Hey guys, it's Ifeiwa and welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. As you can see from the title of today's video, I'm going to be running you guys through the list of all the things that I am not going to be buying in 2023. Yes, I am attempting to make my very first no buy list. Not every day wish list, some days what things are you not going to buy. But before I jump into today's video, I figured that I should introduce myself for those of you who are new. Like I said, my name is Ifeanwa. I make videos on here all about beauty, lifestyle, and fashion with weekly vlogs on Sunday. If you like the vibe at any point, consider subscribing. I would love to have you here. And yes, let's just jump right into this video so i've seen this trend going around a lot on youtube and it really made me sit back and think about all the things that i could be intentional about not spending money on you guys know that i'm pretty intentional about the purchases that i make especially the more high-end ones but it's sometimes it's those like little purchases here or there that you don't really think about that end up adding up and could be a really great way to save money if you just cut back. So the first thing that I am not going to be buying in 2023 are black bags, okay? I have so many black bags. I have one, two, three, four, five black bags. And I feel like I've covered the scope of every single possible black bag that I could have at this point, and I just don't need any more. So when I bought my Celine So Sangle, I told myself, this is going to be your last black bag. Now it's time to venture out into other colors. So in terms of like a really quick bag collection video, I have my Chloe Faye, which is an everyday shoulder bag, great crossbody bag. I have my Chanel medallion tote, which is a great top handle. I guess this is more of like an everyday bag because of the size of it. But again, a top handle bag, great for like more dressier moments as well. I have my Chanel classic flap, which depending on who you ask, could be a great everyday bag. For me, this is an everyday dressy, special occasion, anytime you feel like wearing it type of bag. This honestly has pretty much replaced my Chloe Faye. Unless of course I'm going somewhere where I don't wanna do all of this. And of course my latest purchase, which is my Celine Sosengo, absolutely love this bag. This is my everyday tote work bag. Has a shoulder strap, extremely comfortable. Love, love, love this bag. Wanted it for so, so long. And I also have a Birkin 40, which is not with me right now. I took it to the Hermes Leather Spa when I was in Paris on my last trip. And for me, that bag is more of a travel bag. So I feel like I have every single bag across the spectrum, except maybe like a clutch bag, but I'm not really a clutch bag kind of girl. Like for more of an evening bag look, I would go with my Chanel Classic Flap. So. I feel like every single situation where I would need a black bag, I have a bag that would fit any possible circumstance. And I don't need any more, is essentially what I'm trying to say, okay? For those of you who watched my last bag collection video, you may have noticed that one of my black bags I didn't show you, and that was my Louis Vuitton, I don't remember the name of it, but if you watched that video, you know what I'm talking about. It was like a crossbody top handle, really versatile, lovely black bag. I had that bag refurbished, repaired, restored, whatever the right term is for it. And I gave that to my sister along with another Louis Vuitton bag. So yeah, I don't have that anymore, but still five is a lot, okay? So no more black bags for me. The next thing, keeping up with a similar black theme, no more black bodysuits. If you guys watched the vlog where I basically did my wardrobe declutter, you would have seen that I had so many black bodysuits. It's actually embarrassing. So no more black bodysuits. I have every possible combination that you would need. I even had multiples of the same thing. So no more black bodysuits. For bodysuits in general, I tend to repurchase white ones because with white ones, sometimes they go a bit dingy after a few washes, but I don't need any more black bodysuits, okay? I feel like I don't have a black long sleeve bodysuit anymore, actually. Maybe that'll be the only exception. The next thing I have on my list are t-shirts. This is a very generic one, but I'm talking about these kinds of t-shirts. I have tried so many times to pull off these kind of t-shirts and I've just realized that they just don't suit me. I've bought and returned and donated so many types of t-shirts like this. 
I don't know, maybe I just haven't found the right fabric. I don't know, but for me, I just feel like it adds a lot of volume to the top half of my body. I'd much rather prefer to wear a bodysuit than a t-shirt like this, even though I love the way this looks on some people, especially when it's teen with the blazer. Oh, I love that look, but it's just not something that I think I need to try anymore because I've tried it so many times and it hasn't worked out. I mean, if I come across my perfect t-shirt, I will scrap it. But um, at this point in time, I feel like that doesn't exist for me. I just don't think it works for my body type and my style personally. And while we're on the topic of things that don't work for my body type slash style, again, personally, when it comes to style, I don't believe in rules, do what fits you. But pleated skirts, gosh, I got rid of all my pleated skirts when I did my wardrobe clear out. And once I put them on, I just thought, why have you been trying to make the style work for you? Again, because I am bottom heavy, those kind of skirts add so much volume to my lower half where I don't need the volume. It doesn't suit me, it doesn't look good on me. I would much rather have something that just skims over my hips and my thighs and doesn't add bulk to those areas. So yeah, it's a no from me. <laughs> the next thing I have on my list is cheap active wear. And by this, I just mean active wear that you would get from maybe shops that don't necessarily specialize in active wear because I don't want to like call out anyone, but I've tried active wear from a lot of different high street stores and I mean like high street owned brand stores and I'm yet to be impressed. I feel like with active wear, with gym wear, it's actually worth investing in those brands that have carved out a niche and they know what they're doing and the material will last, it'll wash well, it'll keep you dry. You wouldn't have those like awkward sweat marks. I think it's really important, especially when you're working out to feel good about yourself. So from that perspective, I have my few brands that I've narrowed down that I want to try out this year, specifically Honor or, or Owner. I don't know how you say that. Gymshark, which I've ordered from them before, but I never kept anything. So I think I got wrong sizes. So I would love to try them out again. Obviously like the ones that you all know about, like Nike and all those kind of brands. I'm also curious to try Lululemon because I just want to see what all the hype is about. If I'm spending money on activewear, I want to make sure I'm getting good quality stuff. So no more cheap activewear for me. All right, the next thing I have on my list is not actually an item, it is a service. I will no longer be spending money on next day delivery. Hear me out on this one, okay? I feel like knowing that I have next day delivery sometimes makes me a really bad planner. And I've been burned so many times by this, especially by companies that use every, okay? If you know, you know. But I just feel like if I let myself stop thinking that next day delivery existed, I would be more on top of when I need to order things. And more times than not, standard delivery is free. So from a cost savings perspective, it's great. And it also will mean that I'm less likely to be waiting last minute on, and be putting myself under so much pressure for an order to come. I just want to be that organized to where I know that if I need something a week from now, I'm ordering it at least three to four days in advance. So I'm not needing to spend the extra $4.99 or $6.99 on next day delivery. And I've also got a couple of subscriptions with companies like ASOS, I Club L, I have one with where they do a year's worth of next day delivery for like 10 pounds or something like that. So if I ever do find myself in a scramble, then I'm going to go with those companies where I've already paid for that subscription. So that is my thought process. While we're on the topic of subscriptions, I am no longer going to purchase monthly subscriptions. So I actually, at the top of the year, went in to look at all my subscriptions. So like Netflix and Amazon Prime and all that kind of stuff. And for any subscription service where there is an annual subscription option, I'm going to go for that option because more times than not, the annual subscription is significantly cheaper than paying month to month. I just feel like it's another way to save money in the long run, even though it's a bigger purchase upfront. So I will list a couple of subscription services where I've done that and letting you know how much I've saved across the screen. And I highly recommend that you look into it. A 20 pound saving here, 
across multiple subscriptions adds up, okay? The next thing I have on my list, this one I feel like is going to be hard for me. I am not allowing myself to buy any more content creation tech unless something breaks, okay? I am the kind of person that is always looking to improve on my quality when it comes to these videos. So I'm always like, oh, I need to buy this light, even though I already have so much lighting. I found myself the other day, because I had been on TikTok, convincing myself that I needed another tripod. I kid you not, I have two tripods and three light stands already. Why in the world do I need another tripod? So unless something that I own breaks and I don't have something to fill in that void, I will not be purchasing anything else. Even if a better camera comes out, I will not be purchasing anything else because the setup I have, at least I think for now, is fine. And I anticipate that unless something breaks, I will not need to upgrade for the next year. I've invested so much into all my equipment and my setup already. It's time to just allow myself to get my return on investment before I start looking to upgrade again. So this is something that I think is going to be really hard because I am constantly thinking about how to improve and invest and invest and invest. And sometimes you just need to take a step back and use what you have. Okay, the next thing I have on my list is, <laughs> if you watch my vlogs, you'll know what I mean by this, but I've written down random candles. I am that person that if there's a candle somewhere, I'm going to beeline towards it. I'm gonna pick it up, I'm gonna smell it, and if it smells decent, I'm going to buy it. And nine times out of 10, when I burn it, it's a huge disappointment, okay? I don't wanna do that anymore. I know the candle brands that I like from a more affordable perspective. I love the sand and fog candles that you get from TK Maxx. However, I actually really want to get into more higher end candles this year. I got so lucky with my birthday gifts. I finally got my first diptyque candle and that's been a brand I've wanted to try forever. I'm, I'm saving it for a special occasion to burn it, but I just feel like that's the kind of excitement I want to have around candles, not just, you know, every five seconds I have a new candle. And now I have like a little section in one of my storage cupboards where it's just candles. I don't think I need that. But I just want to make sure that I'm not doing anything that would put more toxic air into my home. So I'm actually going to We'll start researching sorts of wax that's being used in these candles and the essential oils and basically just choose the most non-toxic candles. And once I find the brand or brands that work well for me, I'm just going to stick to those as opposed to, you know, getting caught up in buying a new candle from everywhere and anywhere that sells them. Another thing I have on my list are paper books. So I am not going to be buying paper books this year. I found out something about myself last year and it was that I prefer to read books on a Kindle. I found that if I had a paper book, it would take me longer to read because I just don't enjoy that experience as much anymore. Typically, it's cheaper to buy digital books than it is to buy hard copy books. They take up less space. I don't have anywhere to store physical books anymore. That's actually a big thing. I've gotten into the habit now of gifting out the books that I've read that I think other people will enjoy or just donating them to charity. So again, they just don't end up staying with me. So why am I purchasing them? I will be purchasing digital books. I also want to try audiobooks because I've never, ever, ever tried an audiobook. But beyond that, guys, I'm not buying any paper books this year. And that also applies to paper journals and paper agendas and things like that. So I already have my iPad, which is great for digital planning. And I have my Louis Vuitton ring agenda, which I could fill up with paper that I already have and I can create my own inserts. I don't need any other journals or notebooks or anything like that. I really want to streamline the amount of stuff that I end up bringing into my home that just makes it into the recycling bin or in the trash because it's so wasteful and not just of paper, but also of money, okay? So the next thing I have is kind of cheeky, but I'm saying I'm not buying full price furniture this year. This is an exception because I feel like places like Ikea and stuff don't ever really go on sale, but I feel like most furniture, you can buy it cheaper either online if you get a discount code or from places like Facebook Marketplace. Because I've like recently gone down the Facebook Marketplace deep dive, I realize how much you can save if you're just 
patient and willing to put a little bit more effort into finding your things. With things like furniture, I feel like you rarely ever need it right now. Like if you need a new dining table, more times than not, you can give yourself a couple months to find one. So if you have a couple months, you could possibly find something on Facebook Marketplace. Literally, I've bought things that are 20% the price of retail on Facebook Marketplace. So definitely, it is worth just being a little bit more patient if you can get that sort of saving. And if I can't find a discount code or wait for a sale, I'm not gonna buy it because I really am starting to feel like a lot of things are just marked up for whenever there's a sale and it's not the actual price. So from that perspective, I'm just trying to get a lot more strategic, especially because I want to do like a complete refurnish <laughs> of my home and that obviously will be very expensive but if i can just take my time and do it with my new like facebook marketplace strategy i feel like i can do it for a fraction of the cost so that marks the end of my 2023 no buy list let me know if you have anything on your no buy list for 2023 it's going to be hard i know it's going to be challenging especially a couple things more so than others but i am so so excited to see how far I can get with this. And I feel like now that it's on the internet, I need to hold myself accountable. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what's on your no buy list down below. If you have one or has this made you think about starting one, let me know what you thought about the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in my next one very soon. Stay blessed, stay safe and take care. Bye.